to do something. It's inside us, the desire to change the world by making it a better place for others and ourselves. The truth is, we get caught up in our own world of what do I wear tomorrow and what should we do Friday? So good intentions and all, we just don't seem to get around to it. The thing is, it happens to be the one in 285 children in the U.S. who will be diagnosed with cancer before age 20. That's 10,450 in a single year. Now's your chance to slay cancer with dragons. Join the movement to help us assist families as they battle the unseen costs of childhood cancer. Donate today by going to tylerrobinsonfoundation.com or plan your own fundraising event. And don't forget to share this video with all of your friends and family. You know, it's easier than you think to help a superhero fly. Make a superhero fly. You can do that, you know. The Tyler Robinson Foundation does that. And joining us in studio right now is the president of the Tyler Robinson Foundation, Jesse Robinson. Jesse, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm happy to be here. Uh, we are excited to have you here. Now, you uh, flew out here on a red eye from Utah. You doing okay? So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Great to meet you, by the way, in person. We've had many conversations, Thank so you. nice to meet you. So tell people a little bit about yourself before we get into the foundation. You are one of six kids. Tyler mm -hmm. was your brother, right? Mm -hmm. But what else do you want them to know about you? Me? Uh, I'm an average Joe. Jesse Robinson's my name. I was born and raised in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, family man, you know, I'm one of six siblings, two wonderful parents, and um, all of us were very close with, with Tyler, obviously, him being the youngest, you have this guardianship over him, all of us did, and, and Tyler, uh, well, a lot of people don't even know this, but when Tyler was 12 years old, he battled a life-threatening illness that really, I think, bonded our family uh, in a very unique way at that time. And it ultimately prepared us for four years later when Tyler was diagnosed with cancer. So your brother Tyler, <clears throat> the youngest of six kids, um, at the age of 16 was diagnosed with cancer. And less than two years later, he passed away. Mm -hmm. And that is how the Tyler Robinson Foundation came about. Talk a little bit more about your brother and about how that started. How the, what was the impetus with the foundation? Well, the foundation wasn't really the brainchild of my family or or anyone outside of our family originally. I think the best way to explain it is just to tell a simple story about how our family got involved with the band Imagine Dragons and how this foundation started. It, it started really simply with a small idea. And that idea was, was for me to reach out to Imagine Dragons via Facebook message. And I explained to the band that my brother drew a lot of inspiration from one of their, one of their songs. And that inspiration came from the line, the path to heaven runs through miles of clouded hell. And that was a theme that my brother and I took on, him and I being very close of the siblings, and explaining that to them, saying, hey, my brother's coming to your show for the first time. We love you guys. Could you So you were fans of Imagine Dragons, right. obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. But this was before Imagine Dragons was Imagine Dragons. They were playing a small venue in Utah. Yeah. And I said to them, look, my brother just got diagnosed with cancer. This is a theme to him as he goes into chemo treatment. Through a Facebook post. Through a Facebook post. And I said, if there's any way to give him a shout out, please do. And that turned into an experience in Utah in this dingy venue in Utah that just was the most electrifying experience of my life, bar none. Well, and talk, talk about that experience because your brother was in the crowd. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> no idea talk what about was that. coming. Yeah. Dan Reynolds, the lead singer of Imagine Dragons, silences the whole crowd and says, I have something very important to say. Starts talking about my brother, talking about this young man battling cancer. And the crowd just caught that fire and, and it erupted and they pushed my brother to the front. He's pushed up onto my shoulders and the lead singer and my brother are singing that uh, song face to face. And as a brother, I couldn't believe that this was really going on. And it got to the point where even the whole band, the whole, uh, the whole crowd was just chowing my This chowning. is your brother right here. Yes. Yeah, this is him this singing is with Dan Rouse. This is at the concert. This is the first experience we met the band. And you know, it's one of those moments where all of humanity just comes together onto the same page. 
and including the band so much so that when this show was over, they pulled us backstage and were telling us, that was the coolest thing we've ever done as a band on stage. And it, what that marked was the beginning of a very true friendship, which grew organically over the next year and a half as my brother went through treatments. We would see the band often, we'd go to their shows, we'd be talking to them on the phone, they'd be texting my brother, making sure, you know, following up with how he was doing, and, and me as well. And so much so that when my brother passed away, it was literally the night of that I got a phone call from Dan Reynolds, the lead singer. And he was obviously sharing his condolences with, with my family, but then brought up the discussion with me about starting a foundation to preserve my brother's legacy. Dan brought it up. Dan brought it up. And, so here's and, this band you guys like, you and your brother, and now all <laughs> yeah. of a sudden he's telling you, hey, you gotta make a difference. You gotta let Tyler's legacy live on. This is, he was mm -hmm. the inspiration behind this? Let me just say that Tyler was not a unique kid. He was, he was not just, nor he wasn't a special, special individual. I didn't see him once complain during treatments. Um, and here going almost every day to the hospital for some reason or another. You know, I never saw him cry about it. I mean, he, he got down. It was obvious that he'd get down as anybody would in that situation, but he was unique and people, people saw that. And there's a reason why there's a foundation named after him. And he's an inspirational kid. And I'm not just saying that because I'm his brother. Well, you are, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, what's the mission of the Tyler Robinson Foundation? Is there a mission statement? Yes. So we battle the unseen costs of childhood cancer. And Yale did a great job in the previous segment talking about what are the battles that families go through. They're unique. A lot of people don't realize exactly what happens when a kid gets diagnosed with cancer. And the Tyler Robinson Foundation recognizes that when a child gets cancer, the family gets cancer. And our mission is to battle those unseen costs and in support of the family. So everything that we do supports these families financially, emotionally, and so on. Well, let's dig a little deeper sure. and roll our sleeves up and talk about what you do. Because again, it's well beyond writing a check. Unfortunately, you and your family know all too well what families go through with cancer. As you said, we heard the people from the Yale Cancer Center talk about the emotional, the financial, the stress that goes on. Other kids in the family, things you don't think about until something like this happens and you get a diagnosis within your family. So what do you do as a foundation? What have you learned and what is out there and how to, I mean, there's so many questions, sure. Jesse, but, but give us an idea. Start us off of what the foundation does for those families and how it works. Well, but put yourself in a situation as a parent and your kid's diagnosed with cancer and the doctor is saying you need to do this treatment and you, this chemo and it's going to be for this long and it's... It's something that you really don't care how much it costs. As a, as a parent, and, and anyone can imagine this, you just say, do it, I do not care what it costs. I'm about to go on this journey that I didn't wish upon myself or my right. family, right? You'll okay. do anything for the sake of your child, um, but what happens is these bills, they continually pile up and pile up and pile up, and, and your emotional state is in such a way where you really just don't care what's going on around you. You don't really care about your job, you definitely don't care what the bills are, but there comes a point where you have to face that monster in the closet. And the system that we've set up is to embrace that situation and help the family tackle it with them. So we obviously provide financial support for a family. We pay their bills, we pay their mortgage, we pay their utility bills, their travel costs, their daycare, their food, whatever it takes for a family to be a family, we'll pay for that. But beyond that, we recognize that there is much more support that is needed than just writing a check. So now the Tyler Robinson Foundation has de designed a system where we assign a volunteer a financial planner for every single family to sit down with them face to face to look at their money coming in, look at their expenses, and build a financial plan. Saying, okay, if you stick to this plan with Tyler Robinson Foundation money and your money coming in, we can keep your head above water. And our granting process is anywhere from six months to two years. And it's a long process so that we can kind of wean a family away from this burden that they're, they're having. So when we walk away, the family's not just going to crumble because the crutch is kicked underneath of them. They're going to be able to stay a little bit more stronger than uh, we found them. You mentioned the granting process. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a family with a child with cancer, how do I apply? How do I find out about the grants? How, how does that work? Well, if you are curious about 
finding an application, then by all means visit our website, trf.org, and send an email to us. But what we do is we don't, accept, we don't solicit uh, applications because we volunteer with hospitals uh, across the country. Currently we're partnered with 11 hospitals where we've been able to go in there and train their social workers on the families that we help and train them on our application process. And we use the social workers to find those families because these are the people that know the family situation better. We don't want to look at 100 different applications on paper and, and have to choose. We'd rather work with the social workers who know face to face who really needs, needs help. So the Tyler Robinson Foundation, based on your brother's legacy, has built this network that's able to help other people that have gone through the tragedy that you have gone through. You know what they go through. You've developed resources around it, as you just said, well beyond just writing a check. As a matter of fact, you're not gonna write them a check. You're gonna give them resources and money included and tell them what to do with it. Advise them what to do with it, right? So again, that's how families can get involved. Let's talk about the network. How can a corporation, how can a company get involved if they're out there watching this interview and they <laughs> didn't know about you or they did know about you? What do you encourage corporations and companies to do? Well. The foundation is, is young. We are just over a year old. So the Tyler Robinson Foundation is learning that question you're asking me. But from what we can tell right now in our, in our experience with some amazing companies like SAP, is that when you start getting employees involved, something happens. And I don't know what that word is, inspiration or magic or whatever cheesy word you can think of. It's actually true. You get the employees involved and they just seem happier. I, I, I affiliate with probably 15 different employees on a regular basis from SAP who are actively engaged in the Tyler Robinson Foundation, which is amazing. And I see it how, how much all of them love working on it, how excited they are when a project gets fulfilled. It's not just about raising the money. It's about involvement and the engagement that employees can have. And and you know, bringing that magic to the table of philanthropy within a corporation. Jesse Robinson is joining us in studio. I'm Butch Stearns of the Pulse Network. You are watching The Customer Edge, the subject of this month's webcast, a little unusual for what we normally talk about, whether it's marketing or sales, customer experiences, the broad subject of why doing good for kids can do good for your business. And the focus of it is kids and families with cancer. Uh, Jesse knows, uh, again, unfortunately all too well about that. His brother Tyler passed away and they have the foundation, the Tyler Robinson Foundation at trf.org, trf.org, mm -hmm. that you can get it. Um, we're gonna hear later on from, uh, we're gonna tell the story about what SAP did sure. originally get involved with you and Johan and Robert are gonna come back and you guys are gonna <laughs> talk about that. But a little bit more about um, what, what does this mean for you and your family and your um, network that continues to grow, what does it mean to you to continue your brother's legacy in this regard? It's, you know, I remember the first experience I had, the first mind-blowing experience, last summer I was, on a, I was on a subway in Paris, and someone asked me about my wristband, and just quickly I explained to them it's a foundation that Imagine Dreads started with my family, and before I could even go on, the girl goes, oh, Tyler Robinson? And I was like, what? <laughs> And she turns to her friend, she goes, hey, this is Tyler Robinson's brother. And she's like, you're Tyler Robinson's brother? And I, was, I thought I was like on candid camera. I'm like, this can't be real. But what I realized in that moment is that with the image of Imagine Dragons and how much they promoted the foundation, that it has hit a worldwide network. And we are working with people from you know, all around the world on a daily basis. And we're working with incredible companies on a daily basis. This is something that we never could possibly have dreamed to have grown this big in 20 years. But here we are just a year into it in this most, phenom most phenomenal experiences you can ever really imagine in the, in the nonprofit world. Uh, my, my family is incredibly jazzed about it. And you know, the most exciting part, obviously, is helping other families that were in our situation. Imagine Dragons. Mm -hmm. They were not only the inspiration for you and for your brother behind this. What do they continue to do to spread the message of TRF? Well, they dedicated their music video, Demons, to my brother. They showed, a, uh, at the end of the music videos, a clip of the original concert, which now has 150 million views and, and growing. Um, they talk about it at all of their shows. They 
um, bring on families and corporations to their shows and do meet and greets. Uh, they're, they're very much, very, very, very much involved with the foundation. In fact, I believe the words that were used originally from the band was, we want to use our image to help promote the foundation and raise money, and we want your family to be in charge of allocating the funds to the families in need. And I guess the last thing um, before we take a break would be this. Again, the subject of the show, the title of what we made is How Doing Good for Kids mm -hmm. to g Do Good for Your Business. We're going to hear from Life is Good later on, a company that uh, exactly. Bert Jacobs is dedicating Perfect. 10% of their profits to all kinds of kids' foundations, you know, poverty, illness, cancer, things like that. Um, but to the subject of the show, Why Doing Good for Kids Can Do for Your Business, you already said this. Something happens within an organization. Talk a little bit more about that in your opinion. What, have you, what are you continuing to see for companies, for individuals, under corporate social responsibility, under mm -hmm. cause marketing? What happens to a company when they embrace a cause like yours or look right within their own walls and help out a family that are their employees or their partners or their customers that are going through this? What I think it may be, and when it involves children, is, is the fact that it's relatable to almost everyone. As everyone has gone through their own childhood. So there's a relatable issue. Another thing is most people have children or siblings or, or people, and if you put yourself in a situation where you can look at a child who's suffering, it just pulls at your heartstrings uh, more than other situations. And I'm not degrading other situations, but you know, children, when children are in need, they're innocent. You know, they don't, they're, they're victims of something that we can't quite explain as of yet. But helping them, whether you're an individual or you work with a company, I think helping kids is something that will always bring that magical element to philanthropy. We're about to hear from Steve Gross, uh, who might have the coolest job in the world next to Jesse Robinson. <laughs> here because Steve's title for Life is Good is he's the founder of their Playmakers program and his title is Chief Playmaker. What's a better title than that? Chief Playmaker. Uh, <laughs> before we do though, your relationship with or you know your connection with uh, Bert Jacobs and with Life is Good and, and his connection with the Tyler Robinson Foundation. Can you talk a little bit about that? I've sat down with Bert a few times face to face uh, when we were first starting the foundation and we got connected through a mutual friend that actually works with SAP. And Bert, um, on a personal level, was a very inspirational man for me. He actually uh, inspired a few ideas that have um, led into actual processes within the Tyler Robinson Foundation and has been overly kind in helping, as he explained, his Playmakers uh, uh, Corporation with us and what Life is Good is doing to help children. He, what, they're doing, what they're doing is truly inspirational. And as an individual, I love and respect what they're doing. And the Tyler Robinson Foundation has benefited greatly from our relationship with Life is Good. Jesse, great to have you in for the show. Thank you.